you know some people uh, if the salvation is real then the life of salvation will flow and there will be no friction and be no kind of a dispute there will be no argument you'll do the things you ought to do joyfully I'm doing it to the Lord I'm doing it for the Lord and because I'm doing it for the Lord I may do it and sweat I may do it and you know have to exercise some energy I may do it and spend money I may do it and spend some extra time but I'm happy doing the will of God and you say doing all things without tell me once again murmurings and disputings look at verse 15 that she may be blameless and harmless sons of God these are the obedient sons is coming forth these are the obedient sons and they're going to spend eternity in heaven it says that she may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world you will shine in your office will be different in your place of work anywhere you find yourself you'll be different your attitude different your actions different your behavior different your lifestyle different look at verse 16 holding forth the watch of life that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain neither labored in vain hebrews chapter 5 these are the people that have the salvation that takes them to heaven and did that salvation when it takes them to heaven they'll be there forever and ever you'll be there forever and ever yeah. well, we're coming to we're coming to hebrews chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 9 hebrews chapter 5 verse 9 and be made perfect he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that do watch obey him obey him that's uh, salvation uh, people talk about eternal security but you know eternal security is only for those who are obeying the lord all the time not for those who backslide for those who go back into sin he says and be made perfect he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him nominal believers who are nominal believers those who are believers by name they go to church they have a bible they carry the bible they sing the songs they dress somehow like uh, they are dressing the uniform of their church but they are nominal they don't have real salvation nominal believers nominal uh, church goers they disobey the truth they disobey the truth the truth they ought to abide in the truth they ought to live in they disobey the truth they deny the truth when it comes to you know living the life in the office living the life in the community they deny the truth they disregard the truth any decision they want to take anywhere they want to go anything they want to do any project they want to carry out any business they want to carry out they're only like christians on sunday from monday to saturday they deny the truth they despise the truth despise the truth when you tell them according to the word of God he said I don't I don't walk by that I'm looking for money I don't walk by that I want to get married I'm, I don't walk by that I want to you know please uh, myself these people they are nominal believers they are nominal church goers disobey the truth they deny the truth and they disregard the truth they despise the truth they depart from the truth they look like Christians when everything is going well and when the wind is blowing their direction and everything is going well and people are giving this support and giving this encouragement and all that they look like christians but now let some trial come let some challenge come let some correction come and you'll find them they depart from the truth these people nominal believers they diminish the truth the ones that favor them they say agree with that but the one that contradicts their flesh their character their behavior and their wrong deeds they will diminish the truth they say well i remove that i remove that they are subtracting from the word of god these are people that disallow the truth ah we're having celebration now we're having marriage celebration now we're having naming ceremony now we're having this this one is a burial this one is a particular function this one don't bring a uh, truth here don't bring doctrine here all the people of the were going to be like them they disallow the truth in their decisions 
they will not get to heaven they cannot get to heaven if disobedience is allowed in heaven heaven will be like the earth heaven will be as dirty as corrupt as the earth but the people who are going to get to heaven they are obedient sons and thank god i'm one of them i say thank god i'm one of them genuine salvation is what we need genuine righteousness is what we need genuine obedience to the word of god is what we need divine love in our heart is what we need holiness without which no man shall see the lord god's oppression in our heart that takes away all those uh, all those uh, sides and issues of sin uh, and then we belong to the lord forever and ever will be in heaven Amen. you'll see me there I said you'll see me there. Yeah. I'm saying it for myself. I said you'll see me there. Yeah. I'll see you there in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hey, look at look at Revelation. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. And I'm reading from verse reading from verse 14. It says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. Those are the obedient sons, and they're getting ready to get to heaven. Their destiny and their place, their final place of abode, eternal place of abode is in heaven. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of of life and may enter in through the gates into the city is that verse your yes. i said is that your verse yes. i'm going to read the next verse but you know this one uh, well i don't know who this one is for look at verse 15 for without outside are the dogs are you there no. sorcerers no. or mongers Murderers, no. idolaters, no. and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. No. Ah. No. Verse 14, verse 15, where are you? Blessing. Which is your verse? Blessing. Look at verse 14. Blessed are they, you are blessed. Yeah. The due is commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Amen. I will be there. Amen. Point number three now, point number three, the dedication of overcoming saints for heaven. Why are we dedicated to the Lord? Why do we dedicate ourselves to the Lord? Because we know it takes that commitment, it takes that continuity, it takes that devotion, and it takes that consecration to get to heaven. A person cannot just accidentally get to heaven. It's not serious, but one day he finds himself in heaven. No, not at all. A person cannot just be walking, roaming about, and he says one day, I, I will just find myself in heaven one day no it's a plant thing it's a prepared place for those who are prepared to get to heaven we're coming to john chapter 17 the dedication of overcoming saints for heaven in john chapter 17 verse 11 and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i come to thee holy father keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are while i was with them in the world i kept them in thy name those that thou gavest me i have kept and none of them is lost i pray that none of the people in front of me will be lost and all those listening tonight anywhere and everywhere the grace of god will be abundant in your life you will not be lost in jesus name look at verse 12 but the son of perdition you'll not be a son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled and now come i to thee and these things i speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves i have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil he will keep you they are 
not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Not to go and commit sin in the world, but to go and convert the people who are in the world. And he says, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Through your life, many people in the world will come to believe. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Look at this verse now. This is your verse. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me Amen. where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world to get to heaven Jesus Christ has given us what it takes to get to heaven in John chapter 3 reading from verse 3 John chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 3 it says in verse 3 John chapter 3 Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God you must be born again if you are born again your life will reflect that new birth if any man be in Christ is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things are become new look at verse 5 Jesus answered verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water that's the word of God and the spirit that's the Holy Ghost he cannot enter into the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that it was which was born of the spirit is spirit I pray your life will be spiritual look at Psalm 24 get into heaven Psalm 24 there's a dedication there's a commitment it takes for us to get to heaven for you for me for us to get to heaven dedication look at uh, chapter 24 Psalm 24 verse 3 who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place this is talking about getting to heaven he that has what clean hands it doesn't steal clean hands it doesn't uh, sign uh, something in the office which it shouldn't sign clean hands and it's not committed abortion clean hands it's not involved in killing or destroying anybody he that has clean hands and a pure heart purified heart that means he's sanctified who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully the lord will purify you and prepare you for heaven in jesus name look at psalm 15 psalm 15 verse 1 lord who shall abide in thy tabernacle who shall dwell in thy holy hill it's talking about high heaven who shall dwell in that heavenly place look at the qualification here look at the commitment look at the character look at the expectation of the lord and look at what the blood of jesus can do as it cleanses you washes you purges you and it makes your character the character of an overcoming sage he that walketh uprightly and walketh that in the continual sin uh, continual tense, he walketh righteousness, he speaketh the truth in his heart. These are people getting to heaven, and he backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contained. If a person is bad, a person is evil, he doesn't praise the bad person, so he 
you can get money, so you can get uh, whatever it is from that person. If a person is unrighteous, he doesn't uh, kind of uh, have partnership with that unrighteous person because he's looking for something. He knows that if that person is contained, but he honors them that fear the Lord. He that swore to his own heart and what? Tell me out aloud and changes not what does that mean you've committed your life to the lord jesus christ and say lord i'll follow you to the end and after you made that decision and you are born again then there's persecution and the persecution is hurting and it's terrible you don't say well i didn't know this will come i didn't know it would be like this but you say i've already told the lord i will serve him to the end and i will serve him to the end Somebody there, you'll serve him to the end. All these little, little things that are happening, they are nothing to worry about. The Lord will soon take everything away. He that swore to his own heart and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth this thing shall never be moved. These are overcoming saints of God, overcoming children of God that are getting ready for heaven. You are an overcomer. Yeah. Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 11. In verse 11, it tells us here, those who are overcomers and those who are the saints of God, likewise reckon ye also yourselves dead, to be dead indeed unto sin. Sin will knock at the door, but you will not be at home. Sin will try to uh, open the door, you will not allow that door to be opened. And sin will try to come back into your life, it will not happen. You will stand firm. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. You will stand guard. You will say, it will not come. It will not happen. Sin will not overcome you. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the laws thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Say that for yourself. Say that again. Hey, look at verse 16. Know ye not that whomsoever ye yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that though ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Verse 18, being made free from sin. Praise the Lord. Being made free from sin. I said, praise the Lord. This is talking about you. He has made you free. He has set you free. The blood has cleansed and washed you clean. You will not be dirty again. Being made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. And let's come to chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil that's what brings sin that's what brings uh, bitterness in the heart that's what brings hatred that's what brings hostility again that's what brings backsliding they did that to me i'll do it to them again you know what that means you know they throw a stone at you and then you throw it back to them but the person you are throwing it back to is a backslider is a sinner and then you say you throw that to me he throws the second one to you again you say you throw that to me you are going to be like him very soon and then you throw it back again it says ah so you know to throw stone and then he throws to you again and then he goes back and forth back and forth but if he throws the first stone and you don't reply i'll say god forgive you god bless you god give you the taste of calvary 
And he thought you'll be angry, but you are not angry. His hands will go down. Because you have overcome. I see overcomers there. Yeah. You'll overcome in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at verse 17. Recompense to no man, no man, no matter who the person is. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If possible, if it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with how many people? All men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. This is not your home. This is not your kingdom don't walk like they walk don't talk like they talk you are going to heaven i said you are going to heaven yeah. dearly beloved avenge not yourselves brother that give place unto all for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord therefore if thine enemy hunger yeah. your prayer uh -huh, is hungry now you will die of hunger God will punish you. Is that what it says you should say? No. What should you say? Feed if an enemy hunger, feed, feed him. If he thirst, feed give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Verse 21, everybody, one, two, three, go. Those are the overcoming saints. Those are the people going to heaven. Those are the people before me tonight. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. How will that happen? Look at how to make it happen. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 1. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as their children. That's how to make that happen. You overcome evil. You overcome sin you overcome the hatred of the people you overcome all the bad bad things in society and walk in love not hatred not retaliation and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savor look at verse 7 be not ye therefore partakers with them. The people who are evil, the people who are sinful, don't be like them. Don't act like them. Don't talk like them. Don't say, they did that to me, I'll do it back to them. Never. Somebody that's there say never. never. Verse 25, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself. What kind of church? A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Those are the overcomers. You'll be an overcomer. Yeah. Second Peter chapter 3, Second Peter chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3, I will read him from verse 9. In verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slack slackness, but is not suffering towards what, not willing that any should perish. There's nobody tonight here that God wants to perish. You will not perish. But you see, he says it's not willing that any should pray, but that all should come to repentance. Tonight, if you have not repented, very simple, we just say, Lord, I'm sorry for my past. I come to you tonight. Forgive me. He's so wonderful. He'll forgive you immediately. Save me. He will save you immediately. Look at verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works therein shall be burnt up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness all the things people are running after today um, that's uh, um, wood and stone and uh, sand and cement and this and that and currency and money and paper whatever everything will be burnt up and when it is burnt up where will you be thank God if you are saved you'll go to heaven yeah. 
and you are waiting for the coming of the Lord, he's going to prepare a place for you. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent it. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, what are you looking for? Look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that she look for such things, be diligent that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Verse 17, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him the glory both now and forevermore. Yeah. For those who are going to get to heaven, there's a wide difference between saints and sinners. A clear difference between saints and sinners. A basic fundamental difference between saints and sinners. There is a spiritual difference between saints and sinners. A permanent difference and eternal difference. Sinners are overcome by evil. Sinners are overcome by sin. Sinners are overcome by the flesh. Sinners are overcome by the world and by Satan. But on the other hand, saints overcome. Are they here tonight? I said saints overcome. Are they overcomers here tonight? Who do we overcome? Saints overcome temptations and trials. They will come. You will overcome. Tomorrow, as we go back to the office, remember this study. When temptation comes, do like this, do like this. You say, uh, uh, I am an overcomer. I am a conqueror. So, as a saint, you overcome temptations and trials. You overcome sinfulness and sensuality. It's all over there in the world. You'll see them. But you will overcome in Jesus' name. You overcome hatred and hostility. You know, the people of the world, they're bitter. They're bitter. They're going about, they're pregnant with hatred and hostility. But that thing will never come near you. And the people of the world, they have enticement and allurements of sin turn but you overcome Amen. defilement and derailment you overcome Amen. covetousness and corruption you overcome Amen. pollution and perversion you overcome Amen. saints go to heaven where do sinners go Amen. I said saints go to heaven where do sinners go Amen. where are you going Amen, Amen. Yeah. I said where are you going Amen. I say amen to that for you. How do we overcome? Number one, we overcome by faith. We overcome by faith. Number two, we overcome by the word, the word of our testimony. When Jesus was tempted, he said, it is reaching. Number three, we overcome by the blood of the lamb. That's the blood that gave us victory and won the victory for us. And then number four, we overcome by resisting the devil. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Number five, we overcome by self-denial. Self-denial, you know, something comes and they will say, no, I'm not going to do that. Number six, we overcome by grace. Number seven, we overcome by crucifixion. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and he died for me. Number eight, we, we overcome by total identification with Christ. He lives in me and I live in him. I in them and they in me that they may be made perfect in one. And as we totally, completely identify with the Lord, we're going to be overcomers. Amen. You are going to be overcomers. Amen. Young, you'll overcome. Amen. Old, you'll overcome. Amen. 
new believer you overcome whoever you are the grace of god is available tonight you overcome in jesus name first john first john chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14 i've reaching unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning i'm reaching unto you young men because ye are strong any strong person there today ye are strong and the word of god abides in you and ye have overcome the world you have overcome the wicked one you overcome in jesus name uh, chapter four chapter four i'm reading chapter four and i'm reading from verse one chapter four verse one beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets are gone into the world hereby know ye the spirit of god every spirit that confesses that jesus christ is come in the flesh is of god and every spirit that confesses not that jesus christ is come in the flesh is not of god this is the spirit of the antichrist whereof ye have heard that it shall come even now already is it in the world ye are of god I am of God. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. They come one way, I have overcome them. They come two ways, I have overcome them. They come from the dark, I have overcome them. They come in the day, I have overcome them. Because, 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 greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world where is the overcomer where is the conqueror you'll overcome in jesus name why don't you stand up and affirm that or stand up and confirm that the lord has gone to prepare a place for you thank god you are going to be there thank god you are going to be there we're talking about heaven and we're talking about those who are saved we're talking about those who are born again we're talking about those who are obedient we're talking about those who are overcomers and the grace of god is available for you tonight you will overcome It is time to pray. The mind of God has been revealed to us. Let us take what we have heard to the Lord in prayer. You cannot listen to a message like this and keep quiet. You cannot listen to a message like this and remain silent. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Anywhere you are, all over the world, whether you are in the church or at home by yourself, pray. Oh, what a message. Christ's revelation of return to the Father in heaven. We have been taught clearly that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, came to reveal the truth that saves. He came to this world to seek and to save the lost world. He came to this world to sacrifice and pay the price of our redemption. He came to bring many souls to glory. He came to convey the love of God to sinful humanity. He came to grant us grace, mercy, and salvation. He came to raise ambassadors and representatives who will continue to the end of the world. And when he has finished his ministry, he went to heaven. And when we too have finished our ministry on earth, as obedient son, as obedient daughter, our destination is heaven. We are pilgrims in this world. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek 
want to come. The question is, do you have assurance of going to heaven? Do you have the assurance to see the Lord in heaven at last? And every man that has this hope in him purify himself even as he's pure. To start with, are you born again? If not, today would be another wonderful opportunity. Come to the cross. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Mercy is waiting for you at the cross of Calvary. Call upon the name of the Lord. You can be saved even now. Are you pure? Are you living a holy life? Both in the secret and in the open. Are you like Christ? But as he who has called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of conversation. Are you Christ-like? Do you have the mind of Christ? That's why we should pray this day and call upon the name of the Lord. And say, oh Lord, make me your true son. Make me your true daughter indeed. And if you are a child of God, true son and daughter of God, then you abide in the truth. You live in the truth. You obey the truth. You delight in the truth. You spread the truth. The question is, do you evangelize? Are you involved in preaching the gospel to a neighbor, to your friends? Oh, what a wonderful privilege to spread the truth. We in this church, we are privileged to have the vision given to our Father in the Lord of global evangelization through the global crusade. What a wonderful opportunity to spread the truth on that platform using the global crusade. And by the grace of God, as from tomorrow, another great opportunity is waiting for us. Jesus' power for extraordinary breakthrough. Starting from 24th, 29th of May, 2022. What a wonderful opportunity we have. Use every means, person to person, publicity, invitation, door-to-door -door publicity, through the Facebook, through WhatsApp, through phone calls. Use every means to spread the news of this great event. The anointed servant of God is fully loaded. Oh, we thank God because of the past one year since this vision started. And millions of souls have been blessed all over the world. And this is a special edition to celebrate one year of the commencement of this vision through our Father and the Lord. Let's be involved, all of us, without exception. All of us all over the world, spread the news everywhere. And of course, as we spread the truth, we defend the truth. We hold forth the truth till the end. 
don't be a nominal Christian. Oh, there's no place for nominal believers in heaven. Don't disobey the truth. Don't deny the truth like nominal believers. Stand on the truth. Don't disregard the truth. Don't despise the truth. Don't disallow the truth. Keep to the truth. Then dedicate your life to the Lord. Only then can you overcome. It takes dedication, commitment, and consecration to get to heaven, brothers and sisters. As we live a pure life, as we live holy lives, then we become overcoming saints of God. You live your life, no malice, no revenge, no evil in our lives, and we're dead to sin. Then as saints, we overcome all temptations and trials. We overcome sinful nature and sensualities. We overcome hatred and hostilities. We overcome enticement and evil. We overcome defilement and derailment. We overcome pollution and perversion. The grace is sufficient for us. Oh, his grace is sufficient for us. And I said, how do you overcome? Overcome by faith. Overcome by the word. We overcome by the blood of the lamb. We overcome by resisting the devil. We overcome by self denial. We overcome by his grace and crucifixion. We overcome by total identification with Christ. The grace of God is available today. We will overcome. You will overcome, I will overcome. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If you are an overcoming saint, can you shout a louder amen? Our Father, we thank you because of this great privilege you have given us to learn at your feet. You have spoken to us clearly through your anointed servant. Lord, we are praying. As you have revealed this truth to us, help us to abide in this truth. Help us to live in this truth. Help us to obey the truth. Help us to delight in the truth. Help us to spread the truth, Lord. Help us to defend the truth. And Lord, help us to hold forth to the truth till we see you face to face. Lord, we are praying that as you have helped us in this church, in particular, the great vision you have given to your servant, our Father in the Lord, about globalization of evangelism, reaching out globally through global crusade. Oh, Lord, we are praying as we are approaching another time of this great event, especially starting from tomorrow. Oh, Lord, we we'll pray that you'll move in your power. You'll move in your might. As the theme says, Jesus' power for extraordinary breakthrough. Oh, Lord, we we'll pray. It shall be a time of breaking yoke of the devil, a time of extraordinary breakthrough globally in Jesus' name. Lord, we we'll pray that millions of souls will be blessed. Lord, we we'll pray that shall be a time when, Lord, millions of people all over the world will be touched by your power in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, we pray, let it be a time of exodus, mass exodus of people, of souls, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Let it be a time of avalanche of 
miracles, signs and wonders, the ones we have never seen before. Father, we pray in this period of celebration of one year of global crusade starting from tomorrow, Lord, we, have, we will see what we have never seen before in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we partake, help us, Lord, that we influence others to partake. As we go out, we will invite others, we will influence others, we will call others using every means available. And that, oh God, we will all gather that day from tomorrow. And great will be the manifestation of your power through your servant, through your anointed servant in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that at the end of this great event, of the mighty revival all over the world, Thank you, Lord, for the answer. We give you the glory and the honor. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.